no ar, Jailson. Ok. Ok, so, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank your virtual presence uh, in this series of seminars of the Department of Astronomy at the National Observatory. And it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker, our today's speaker, Professor Alessandro Melchiori. Uh, Alessandro is professor uh, of physics in the Department of Physics at, La, at the University of Rome, Rome La Sapienza. Uh, and Alessandro has made very important contributions to the field of cosmology in his career. He's certainly one of the world's experts on the CMB physics. And uh, more recently, he has uh, made also uh, written some important papers about some tensions or discrepancies or problems, as you wish, in the, in the standard cosmology, uh, some discordance, right? And this is the topic of his talk today. So he's going to talk about cosmic discordance. And uh, Alessandro, again, thank you very much for being here, for accepting our invitation. I pass the word to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, it's really a pressure to, to give this talk. Okay, so I'll try to share my screen. And uh, I hope it's, it's working well, yes? Yes, it's working well, perfect. So thank you. Thank you really for this invitation. My talk will be on uh, cosmic discordances. Um, I am Alessandro Melchiori from University of Rome La Sapienza. Um, let me start with this uh, image. This is uh, a uh, picture of the universe uh, about uh, 14 years ago. Uh, so how was uh, our universe, our early universe in the, in the very, very, very past? Uh, this picture has been uh, made possible thanks to uh, the Planck satellite that um, produced this uh, image of the, of, the, of the sky. And uh, for us, for us cosmologists, this uh, picture is extremely important because it is perhaps uh, the most important observable you know, we have today. Uh, because of what we can do from this uh, map of the sky we can uh, compute the two angular, uh, the two point angular correlation function, expand this two point angular correlation function, and uh, um, in the jump polynomials, uh, and compare these uh, data points with the theoretical predictions, which are also extremely accurate. So, this is the situation at the moment. So, you take this map. <laughs> I'm saying things in, a, in, in very, very simple terms, but you take this map, you compute the two-point correlation function, you expand the legend polynomials, and you can see here in the, this plot the, the data points taken from the map. Alessandro, I'm sorry, uh, excuse me, it's because you're, you are seeing the first slide of your presentation, you can, we, we are not seeing the second slide that you are talking about. Uh, you you don't see. I mean, it should be a plot on the on the map. Yeah, we just you, you are seeing now your first uh, slide with the title. Just you didn't see any animation. No, not yet. Like this? No. 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 Now let's change it. No, only the title. So maybe you no. can stop sharing your screen and speak and share again, right? Okay, yeah, let's line the part in primo piano. Okay, let's okay, let's see. Okay. Okay, let's share again. Let's share the desktop. Okay. Let's see if I can do like this, I'm sorry. So you see now? The first one. You see yes. the second slide? No, only the first one. Now oh, now, now, now we can see the second one. Yeah. Great. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's okay. Okay, no problem. <laughs> now, okay, so uh, sorry for that. I mean, uh, you, you see these data points. Do, do you see the pointer also? Yes, now it's perfect, yeah. Okay, thanks. 
So you see these uh, blue data points. These blue data points are taken from uh, this map of the CMB sky made by Planck. And what is important, extremely important, you see the red line. The red line is uh, the theoretical prediction uh, made assuming what is called the so called lambda CDM model. So in practice, we have a model in cosmology that is uh, able to produce uh, a very extremely good fit, let's say, to uh, the data taken from this, uh, this uh, map. Indeed, if you just uh, focus your attention to this range of angular scale, essentially from L30 to 2500, we have uh, only four outliers at more than two standard deviation and no outlier at more than three. So it's really an impressive agreement, okay? So that's why, <laughs> this is the reason of the title, a perfect uh, lambda CDM universe, okay? And uh, since this model has uh, some parameters, uh, you can be so ambitious to uh, derive constraints on the parameters of the model. So you see here, you have uh, the baryon density, the amount of baryons in the universe. If you assume this lambda CDM model, then the Planck data tells you that this value is 0.02237 with a very small error bar, okay? At the same time, you can consider the cold dark matter, and you see you have a 0.12 plus minus 0 0.0012, okay? So if you just take this number at face value, it seems that you need the cold dark matter at the level of about 100 standard deviations, okay? Because to have zero, you need 0.12. And, uh, but this is uh, under the assumption of, of, of lambda CDM. This means that if this model is correct, this model works only and only uh, if uh, you have uh, the cold dark matter component. And you see also this uh, number here, 0 0.9649, this is the so-called spectral index. This uh, is a, mo a parameter that comes from inflation and inflation tells you that this number should be close to one, but different from one. And you see exactly uh, is in agreement with the prediction of inflation or slow roll inflation is uh, similar to one, but is different from one at the level of seven standard deviation. So you see here two columns. One uh, is using uh, the uh, baseline likelihood of Planck, but uh, there, are, uh, there is an alternative likelihood. The likelihood is the code that actually given the data gives you a chi-square, okay, for a model. And there is an alternative likelihood in the Planck collaboration called CAMSPEC. It's an alternative likelihood in the sense that you use uh, different chunks of data and uh, has different assumptions. But you see that there is a very good agreement in between the parameters computed through PLIC and the parameters uh, uh, obtained with this alternative likelihood. Okay, the difference is at most half sigma, half standard deviation. Okay, so this is incredible. It's really incredible. This agreement, uh, the agreement between CMB and the Lambda CDM model. But uh, uh, even more incredible is maybe the consistency of uh, the Planck results with uh, in, uh, independent of observables. For example, you can consider the baryon acoustic oscillation. And uh, you see this in gray is the prediction from Planck assuming Lambda CDM. And you see, for example, this. Uh, these, uh, these very small data points from the BOSS uh, survey from the data release 12, they are in very, very good agreement with uh, the, <laughs> the data from Planck, okay? At the same time, if you concentrate your attention on supernovae, supernovae type 1A at a very high redshift, you see again a, a very good agreement and you have a good agreement um, with uh, redshift space distortion and also with the prediction of uh, Big Bang and nucleosynthesis. Okay, I don't want to enter in detail, but essentially it means that uh, if the Planck data is in agreement with uh, uh, Lambda CDM and with other data sets uh, and everything is consistent uh, um, and it seems that there is a perfect concordance. Okay. 
And indeed, if you take the latest uh, uh, papers uh, um, that you can find in an archive, it's more or less always the same story. For example, the Planck 2018 results, if you look at the abstract, they say the six parameters uh, based lambda DM model provide a good fit to the Planck data. If you get, take the BOSS uh, uh, paper, you find no preference for a model that includes additional parameters um, so, um, or behind the vanilla special flat lambdas the model. Thus, again, they, they, they see no evidence for disagreement of our weak lensing data with, uh, with Planck. And uh, this is another <laughs> abstract taken from Panstar supernovae. We are fully consistent with the flat lambda CDM cosmology. No evidence for dynamical dark energy. Our results are compatible with the cosmological constant from the supernova legacy sample. And again, this is another paper. No evidence in favor of extension. Essentially, you have many, several papers claiming more or less the same thing. Everything is consistent with lambda CDM, with six parameters model. And uh, what are the consequences of this? The first consequence is a very good one in the sense that if we have the right, if we, if we got right, okay, if we have the, the good model, okay, if the, really, the, the real model is lambda CDM, then we can use this model to test fundamental physics, like for example, the neutrino mass. This is just a, a paper I took from, Few, few years ago, they're using the CMB data and using also the Lehman Forest data. They got an upper limit on the sum of the neutrino masses of 0.09 EV, okay, which is extremely impressive. And this upper limit relies on the assumption of lambda CDM. If lambda CDM is correct, this limit is, of course, correct. At the same time, this is another paper you see again using uh, the bioacoustic oscillation in combination with CMB, they get, okay, again, a very, very impressive upper limit on the sum of neutrino masses, less than 0.14 EV at 95% confidence level. So essentially, this uh, saying, uh, you, we have the good model, the real model, we found the, 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 the true model. And so now we look for extension uh, that actually they involve fundamental physics like neutrino masses or neutrino number, whatever. And so we can uh, trust these numbers because uh, the, the baseline model is as a good model. Okay. Then unfortunately there's another consequence. <laughs> the following, <laughs> if we found the final model, okay, if we solve the cosmology, then we might need uh, to start in looking for another job in the sense that uh, what else, what, what we can do? I mean, uh, I don't want to say that we are in the same position of people working in particle physics, okay? Because uh, <laughs> the situation is very different as I will tell you, but essentially um, if, if we found everything, okay? So what's the point in uh, keeping, uh, <laughs> to keep working in, uh, in cosmology? Okay, let's go and work some somewhere else, even if, okay, I think uh, working in McDonald's is not so bad uh, nowadays. <laughs> but uh, I think my question in this talk is the following. It is true, it's really true that uh, Lambda CDM has no problem at all and that uh, <laughs> we, we are in this condition. And I just want to remember the, the famous sentence from Landau that says, uh, cosmologists are often in error, but seldom in doubt. Okay, so maybe now <laughs> we are in error, okay? And why we are in error? Okay, let me start with this point. Okay, this is my, my opinion, okay? This is my personal view. But uh, the point is the following, that uh, uh, first of all, let's look at the, at the model of this Lambda CDM model. In general, uh, um, working, a workable cosmological scenario is uh, based on uh, completely unknown physics. Okay, so if we want to explain the data, this is independently from lambda CDM, we need for we need for sure a dark matter component for the form structure galaxies. We need inflation for um, solving some of the problems, okay, of uh, the standard model, uh, and to the, 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 the primordial homogeneity and also the primordial <laughs> fluctuations. And we need dark energy to, to explain the current state of secretive expansion. So cosmology today is uh, essentially 
a base, okay, on the other three uh, pillars, okay, there is dark matter, inflation, and dark energy. And cosmology is based on these three things. And these three things are completely unknown. And let me be a bit provocative, okay? Okay, in the sense, okay, <laughs> the sense if you if you ask uh, where these three pillars uh, stay, okay, they may be in a, on a cosmic turtle if you want, in the sense that we don't have uh, any experimental evidence for uh, dark matter at the moment. Uh, we have a many theoretical model, but no clear uh, evidence in laboratory. For inflation, we have uh, several models, but uh, uh, the situation is highly speculative. Uh, for dark energy, uh, there are several models and not all of them are working, okay? So it's uh, more or less like the, the story, you know, of the, of the turtle, uh, of the universe, uh, that, um, is on the turtle, and then the question is, uh, uh, but the turtle stays on what? Probably on another turtle, if you want, okay? <laughs> but, but really, I, I, I am a bit provocative, but this is my, my feeling. Okay, and the lambda cold dark matter model is just a, a specific uh, model, okay? In the sense, we have plenty of models that actually can explain the current data, but we select between all these models, the lambda cold dark matter model. And this lambda cold dark matter model assumes uh, general relativity, if you believe uh, that the, there is a cosmological constant in the energy tensor, okay? Uh, the Friedman uh, flat metric, dark matter, they say in the cold dark matter model is cold, it's really cold, does interact with everything and is always extremely massive. Uh, inflation is just uh, one minimally coupled scalar field, uh, spatially flat universe, primordial scale invariant perturbations, okay? It is, is the simplest model. And the dark energy is a, a cosmological constant. So you see, there, is a, uh, the, 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 there are specific assumptions, okay? That have been made in the lambda called dark matter model. The problem, the problem is that there is no reason, okay? To make these assumptions. Okay, there is no experimental reason because one can say, for example, that maybe I can describe dark energy with less parameters with a cosmological constant, but if you do this, then you have all the problems of the cosmological constant. So using the outcome rates or argument, in my opinion, is not really correct because you might have a much, much more physical model and you need more parameters for this model, but it's much better a model that is physical with more parameters than a model that's unphysical with less parameters. Okay, just to explain my point. So in my opinion is the following that the lambda, we should, uh, um, let me say, uh, we should really uh, have an experimental evidence for lambda CDM before saying, uh, or before discarding the anomalies that we might have in the, in the data, okay, we may see in the data. Because uh, this is uh, very important for me, the lambda CDM uh, is not the cosmological equivalent of the standard model of particle physics. Because the standard model for particle physics, uh, <laughs> the standard model of particle physics, we measured all the uh, particles, more or less, all the interactions. And so if we look something different from the standard model of particle physics, uh, there I can understand that we need uh, four or five standard deviations, okay, to be really interested in anomalies. But in this case, this model is based on really new physics that we don't know anything about. So uh, there is no reason, apparent reason for me to say that the Lambda CDM should be by definition, the standard model of cosmology, okay? And this is just my opinion because this opinion is not shared by the other cosmologists um, a very good cosmologist, Joe Dunkley from uh, Princeton. This is just a, um, a slide I took from one of their talks. 
And what she says is that to take really serious the need to abandon Lambda CDM, I will be compelled by a five sigma disagreement with CMB Elastic Structure by two different local measurements. Okay. So in, in practice, is, uh, she is saying uh, you have to, uh, to have two different uh, anomalies, uh, let's say at five sigma, before you, uh, throw, if you, before you believe on any anomaly on Lambda CDM. And in my opinion, it's a little bit too much because. This is a is correct way if you are uh, looking for uh, the X boson, okay. But the, the, the lambda CDM is, is not fundamental, okay. There is no reason, in my opinion, to be uh, so conservative. And uh, also, there is this question, okay. Let's assume so. First of all, the lambda CDM is just a model, but it's not based on any experimental evidence, okay? So there is no reason to prefer this model to another model that fits the data equally well. And the second point is that do we have anomalies, okay? This lambda CDM is really producing this very good fit with the data. And uh, first of all, the most uh, famous uh, tension we have today between uh, in, from, in the lambda CDM model is the so-called Hubble tension. You can derive the Hubble, ten, the Hubble parameter uh, in, uh, in using CMB data. Uh, and you see that if you use CMB data or data set that are in um, at high glass shift in some way, you see a value of the Hubble constant, uh, which is uh, more or less uh, centered between 67 and 68 kilometers per second per megaparsec. While if you do a more direct measurement, okay, and this is a collection of recent measurements of the Hubble constant taken, for example, from supernovae and other methods, you see that the, the value that you get locally is uh, higher, okay, and the difference uh, is uh, at the level of 4.4 standard deviation. Okay, these data points are not independent, okay, because <laughs> from here, you, of course, it's, if you just take these data points, the, the tension is much higher than 4.4 sigma. But if you do uh, the analysis in a correct way, uh, you see that uh, the, 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 at least, okay, the tension at 4.4 standard deviation. So there is this tension and uh, several cosmologists, they don't really believe that this is a true tension, okay? They discard it saying that actually, if you look at how you determine the Hubble constant from local observation, there are many steps. First, uh, you see, use uh, geomet geometrical uh, methods to determine the cephade uh, luminosity time relation. Um, then from, from these, then you calibrate the cephades. From the cephades, you calibrate supernovae. And then you use this uh, catalog of supernovae at um, small redshift to derive uh, uh, constraints on the Hubble constant, which is this one, OK? from uh, the paper by Ries et al. in 2018. And uh, of course, there are several possibilities of systematics, okay, during this, uh, this computation. And so they say, but probably, okay, this is, this is just a statistical error, maybe systematics are not well under control. I agree with this, okay, maybe there are systematics, and so maybe the true value is around 67, as measured by CMB. But the other point is the following, that actually you cannot really measure the Hubble constant using CMB. Because for example, there is a the so, so famous uh, degeneracy, uh, geometrical degeneracy between the Hubble constant and uh, for example, the equation of state of dark energy. And so you see these are uh, two models, okay? One has uh, an Hubble constant 65 and uh, is a cosmological constant, or you can have uh, an Hubble constant of point of 54 and an equation of state minus point 0.6. So you see there is a big difference here, but the models, they produce the same angular power spectrum, okay? So essentially, when you say that the Hubble constant is 67 from CMB observation, you are saying, I, I believe, okay, I have a faith in the Lambda CDM model. And if the Lambda CDM model uh, is correct, then I have 60, 67, okay? So essentially what I'm saying is that it's really model dependent and there is no reason to believe that the Lambda CDM model is the correct model, okay? 
There are other tension, another possible tension is the so-called cosmic shear tension, and uh, is a tension when you measure the sigma eight parameter, so the amount of uh, fluctuations on scales of eight megaparts of matter fluctuation using uh, uh, cosmic shear data, so weak lensing. And so you can see these are different uh, results from uh, different surveys. And this is the result you obtain okay, in the same plane, not using cosmic shear data, but using the Planck data, assuming the lambda CDM model. Okay, and you see there is a tension. This is not in agreement with these data points. And from this recent um, paper, you can see perhaps better. This is the Planck data set, data point, and these are several measurements. And you see actually here use the S8 parameter, which is sigma eight times the square root of omega matter divided 0.3. And you clearly see, okay, that uh, there is a tension, okay? They prefer a lower value. Okay, this S8 tension can be seen also in uh, the cluster counts data, okay? Uh, this again is another recent paper, and you see the several measurement of S8 coming, okay, from cluster counts of weekly sensing, and you see, again, there is a tension with the Planck result. And uh, this Planck result is coming after the assumption of lambda CDM, okay? Without uh, the assumption, these error bars will be meaningless because it's not a direct measurement, it's really indirect, okay? Now, okay, this is the, the situation. So the, the Planck data set, I told you that uh, if you assume lambda CDM is in perfect agreement with BO and supernovae, but is not in agreement with measurement of the Hubble constant, okay, locally, and is not in agreement uh, using uh, the cluster counts or, or cosmic shear data. But there are also interesting anomalies in the Planck data set itself. If you take the Planck uh, angular power spectrum, okay, you can derive the cosmological parameters so, uh, using all these data points, or you can focus just on this portion of the data set, okay, so you just take the data points from L2 to up to L1000, and you compute the uh, constraints on the parameters, and then you use this other region from L1000 to L2500, and the point is that the cosmological parameters you derive from this chunk of data are different, slightly different from the cosmological parameters derived from Terra, and are different from the <laughs> total analysis, from the global analysis. So there is this tension, and you can see, I mean, it's discussed in the, the Planck papers. Um, I just want to show you here, for example, you see mm, you, here you cut the, the, the data set with a maximum value of L, and you see the data points are systematically, these are the values of the parameters, these parameters, and these data points are systematically lower than the black line that is the mean value obtained when you use the all the data set, okay? So it seems that if you just uh, take a, the, a large multiple up to L1000, the parameters are different. So the, there is a shift in the value of the parameters and is at the level of uh, two standard deviation. It's an interesting anomaly. So the question is uh, why we have this? And uh, there is interesting connection with uh, CMB lensing. In indeed, what is this ambulancing? Uh, the, what we see, I told you that this is the last scattering service, is the uh, image of the universe redshift 1000. But actually, the photons they travel, okay, before they reach us for a uh, long time. And while they travel, they feel uh, the gravitational uh, field um, from the dark matter fluctuations, which are still linear, okay? So there is a small deviation. In the, in the path of the photon before reaching us due to the dark matter fluctuation between us and the last scattering surface. And so you can see from this map, this is a simulation of CMB sky without the effect of this lensing from the dark matter fluctuation. And this effect, when you include this dark matter fluctuation, you see the effect is extremely small, okay? But still, it's possible to see uh, in, uh, in the angular power spectrum, because you see here is the angular power spectrum. I plot two models. One model, which is the uh, blue one 
has no lensing, while uh, you see that uh, the red one has uh, the effect of lensing included. So there is a small difference, which uh, if you look at the, if you compare these two models, is about 6% in the two spectra at L about 1,800. Okay, so this, this, there is this small difference. But this small difference is, is actually possible uh, to measure, uh, thanks to the uh, high accuracy of the plot data. Now, if you want to uh, actually measure it, what you can do, what you could do is the following. You introduce a parameter that actually uh, we introduced in this paper in 2008, uh, which is called AL. So if you have a AL equals zero, then it means that in the angular power spectrum, you don't have any lensing. AL equal one, it means that you have the lensing component as expected in your theoretical model. But uh, you can have also by a larger level of three, six, and nine, okay, as, as large as you want. So essentially, AL is, uh, is not physical at all, it's completely unphysical. What I'm saying is that, okay, I change by hand the amount of lensing on the angular spectrum. And by hand, it means that, I mean, I, I can do whatever I like. So there is no more, uh, and no more connection between uh, the parameters that you use to produce the angular spectra and, uh, and the, the amplitude of the lensing, okay? So for this reason, it's completely unphysical because you're changing by hand the amount of CMB lensing. And you see the effect is more lensing you have, less uh, pronounced are these acoustic oscillations. So you see here, for example, with this scale. Okay, it's, okay, so if AL is compatible with one, then everything is fine. If it's not, then there is a problem. And indeed in Planck, there is a problem. If you okay, use the Planck and data set, you have it that AL, the AL is larger than one, a 2.8 standard deviation. Okay, so it's almost a three standard deviation over eight from one to the expected value. Okay. And, uh, and it depends a little bit from uh, temperature. In temperature, you see this value of AL, which is large, more larger than one. If you use also polarization data, then it uh, seems this goes down, but the error bar also goes down. So it's still three standard deviation of A. And the interesting thing is that actually <laughs> this AL parameters, okay, so if you by end in, uh, increase the amount of lensing, okay, by, by, by 20%, then this uh, problem I told you that uh, the parameters are different if they, you compute them from, uh, from a large or small scale, this problem disappears. Okay, so here these uh, red dot, uh, blue dot are the parameters computing, uh, computed, obtained using these different chunks of data from, uh, from this paper. And uh, you see that if AL is 1.2, the value of the parameters uh, in uh, these two chunks of data are compatible. But if AL is one, you see that there is a tension, okay? The, there is uh, some tension, for example, especially in H naught, okay? So they are not compatible at all. So this is interesting. It means that something seems wrong in this AL parameter. And uh, if you let is AL to vary, then actually what happens? There are many interesting things. First of all, when you include also BAO, there uh, is a, a three sigma uh, indication for AL. Okay, so Planck plus BAO suggests AL larger than one at almost three standard deviation. So there is a, the, 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 I show you this concordance between Planck and BO, and they told this is a success of the lambda CDM model, but it's not really like this because you can have this extra parameter AL, which is not lambda CDM, and still have a consistency, okay, with BO. Not only you increase uh, when you buy AL also the upper constant, instead of 67, you go to 68. It's not enough to solve the, um, uh, the double tension, but it goes in the right direction. And also the S8 parameters is smaller by 3.5%. Again, it's not much, but it goes in the right direction to solve the current tension with uh, the Hubble constant and with the cosmic shear data, okay? So it seems that uh, at this point, that maybe there is actually a systematic in the plant data, and that this, this, is not, this systematic can be described by this AL parameter.
But unfortunately, the point is that we don't know what is AL, okay? <laughs> because <laughs> at the moment it's completely unphysical, okay? I cannot change by, by hand the amount of lensing. I'm not, uh, okay, God that actually can change the amount of lensing in, <laughs> in the data like this, okay? There, there must be some, or there is a systematic, and still we haven't found it despite the years, years of investigation of the plant data, or there is uh, some physical mechanism that actually can do this. Okay. Do you have a... uh, Okay, this is, a, I, I will answer to the question later, right? Okay. So uh, in this paper that uh, we published uh, two years ago, we made just a, a simple uh, uh, statement that actually was read in the Planck papers. And uh, we said a physical explanation for AL is a closed universe, okay? Because in a closed universe, you might have more matter, more cold dark matter uh, than in a flat universe. If you have more cold dark matter, then you have more lensing and you can explain this AL. And uh, you can see this, uh, okay, uh, sorry, if you can see this, it, it is from this plot. You have uh, the curvature, omega k, okay, in this plot. Here you have AL, these are coming from the Planck data set. And you see the constraints are 68 and 95%. And you see there is a very uh, a nice degeneracy between AL and omega K if you just consider plant data. Okay. So essentially, <laughs> you see that uh, if uh, uh, the universe is flat, you get uh, AL larger than one. Okay. But uh, if the universe is uh, not flat and you go in the, the left, this means it's closed, you see you have a closed universe and AL is compatible with one. That is the, the, what you expect, okay. So you see, uh, this provides a physical explanation and is the reason behind the fact that actually the Planck data set alone, if you take the Planck data set alone, uh, provide uh, an important evidence, okay, for a closed universe, 3.4 sigma. Okay, for a closed universe. You see, uh, if you take just the Planck paper, we, we pointed out this in our paper, okay? But if you just take the Planck parameters paper, they explicitly say that omega, say, omega K is between these values at 99% confidence level, okay? And uh, so this is a, a, a result coming from the Planck collaboration, okay? It's not just us that are, are claiming that the universe uh, is closed from Planck. It's just the Planck data set, okay? that is, uh, is showing this anomaly for a closed universe, this preference for a closed universe. And the nice thing is that actually when you do this, when you consider a closed universe, also the shift between the parameters at large and the small angular scale disappear, okay? You have uh, this, uh, this, uh, this extremely good uh, agreement between the parameters in the two different chunks of data when you consider a closed universe, exactly as you had uh, in, in the case of the ALS parameter. Okay, when we, we submitted this paper, it was uh, published, uh, and uh, uh, of course, there was some press release. Uh, the, the journalists, they misunderstood completely our paper in the sense that we are, we are not claiming uh, that the universe was closed. We were just pointing out that the Planck data um, is suggesting that the universe is closed. It doesn't mean that we believe that the universe is closed, of course. But just to show you some of the reaction, okay, for example, uh, all the reactions were extremely bad. <laughs> for example, the Spergel say uh, it's a really important claim, but but I'm not sure it's, uh, it's one that's baked by the data, okay? Uh, actually, the evidence is uh, against it. Uh, Anthony Lewis uh, say this is just a statistical fluke. Uh, Heavy Loeb say that the result is intriguing, uh, but uh, I don't believe it, okay? Uh, George Statue that asked not to be directly quoted. This is actually in the, <laughs> in the, in the paper, okay? They write like this. Pointed out uh, to life science, uh, that there are, uh, that pro there are problems with a uh, closed universe that actually um, we, we wrote this in our paper. And so he doesn't believe. And uh, for example, so Martin Kunz in Neue Zurich Zeitung uh, brought this in German and uh, von Melchior is uh, insane, <laughs> claiming that the universe is closed. Now, uh, clearly, if you start to claim that the universe is closed, uh, the, the shape of the universe it can be very strange, can be a very unusual, it can be, can, can be unusual, it can be like this, 
Okay, so clearly from the theoretical point of view is something different from, from Lambda's DM, but there are many several possibilities, theoretical possibilities for closed models, okay? Um, just I um, point to two possible uh, uh, closed models so that actually uh, can solve other problems. So from the theoretical point of view, I would not say that a closed universe is a, uh, is a problem respect to a flat universe because a flat universe when include a cosmological constant, okay? It's difficult to, to, to prefer a flat universe with a cosmological constant uh, respect to a closed unit universe with something else, okay? So but my point is clearly just my point of view, but I will not, I will not say that from the theoretical point of view there is something really against a closed universe. So where is the problem? The problem is the following. Okay, let, let me make this joke. I, I told you that uh, uh, there was this incredible, there is this incredible agreement between Planck and BO, between Planck and supernovae. And so uh, I told you about this perfect universe. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to, <laughs> to be blasphemed, but essentially you have a Planck, okay, the Planck data set, and this Planck data set is in perfect agreement with BO and supernovae type 1A. You see here um, uh, experimental cosmologists and theoretical cosmologists say, uh, claiming that this is a very good agreement. You see theoretical cosmologists also, they debate about even in this case, okay. And you see also angels <laughs> making press release. Okay, so <laughs> this is perfect. This is a paradise, okay? Because there is a, this, incredible, this fantastic agreement. But uh, unfortunately, the point is that when you open up to curvature, okay, the situation uh, can be extremely different, okay? Why? Because, uh, so yeah, that's the point, that's the, why people don't like curvature, because if you let curvature to vary, okay, the situation is much, this, this cosmic concordance disappears, okay? Why? For example, I show you this plot. This is the plot with the uh, with assuming flatness, the agreement between Planck, Gray Bands, and BO. But this is a, has been obtained assuming a flat universe. If you remove a flat universe and you expect, okay, you, you just uh, leave uh, the curvature to vary, okay, I'm not imposing here a closed universe, just saying uh, to the curvature, please uh, take the value you prefer. Then you see that this agreement between BO and Planck uh, it goes away. Okay, there is a, um, a tension at the level of three standard deviation. Okay, so since there is uh, this incredible disagreement between uh, uh, this region here and the uh, post data points, this means that this concordance that we saw before is uh, there just because we are assuming a flat universe. And this is something, okay, I, I would not like, okay, I would not uh, like to have a concordance based on, a, on some assumption, okay. And not only, but uh, I show you that there are anomalies and the anomalies are not actually solved by a closed universe. This is what F Stadio actually uh, complained about and agree, okay. If I, if I let, I let curvature to value, then the Hubble constant from Planck is even smaller is about 55. And uh, if you look at the SA parameter, okay, the tension with cosmic shear data, you see this is a flat universe from Planck. This is a closed, uh, let's say, a moderate curvature. And you see the data points are here, the, the region is here. So you, you really <laughs> increase uh, the tension with the local universe, okay. So you might say at this point, okay, but so why you are considering uh, curvature? Because if you consider curvature, things get worse, okay? You have more tension, uh, <laughs> you, 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 you lose the concordance with the BO, so why you should consider? And my point is actually that we need to do this because we should not have a concordance that is based on our belief, on our assumptions, okay? <laughs> we, we should let, because uh, the possibility, we, we, we can have a closed universe. And if, if uh, some data prefer across the universe and uh, other data they don't prefer it, then this is a problem. Okay, we should solve this problem and not hide it uh, under the, the carpet. And uh, there are many other problems with this because uh, uh, if you assume, I mean, the question, other question is okay, there are data sets suggesting a flat universe. Uh, and as far as I know, the best way to measure 
the curvature of the universe is using CMB data, you can have uh, uh, some uh, uh, constraint on, on the curvature, taking all the other data sets, but uh, the constraints uh, will be always extremely weak. And for example, if you take BO, BBN, and supernovae data, you will have this region here and is away from the region from Planck, and they also will prefer a closer universe. Okay, so it's not that like that uh, there is Planck uh, that is uh, suggesting a closed universe, but all the other data sets are not suggesting a, a closed universe. The other data set, they cannot really suggest anything, okay? It's just that they are intentional with Planck. Uh, so the question now is, uh, can we achieve concordance uh, in a universe with curvature? A possibility that we have investigated recently in this paper is to vary also W, okay, the equation of state. And, uh, okay, people keep in saying that everything is fine, the <laughs> lambda CDM is working perfectly, we should not worry about, but then I just want to point to this result, okay, from this paper, from our, my paper, where uh, I just vary W curvature at the same time, as so you see, okay, this, uh, this, uh, um, Indaco uh, region is from Planck, okay? So you see Planck doesn't really measure H not alone, as I told you in this extended parameter space, but you see that the region from Planck is always below omega K equals zero. So this is just a closed universe. And uh, you see that now I, I combine Planck plus supernovae data, Pantheon, and they get a closed universe, okay? Now, so the Planck plus Pantheon is in agreement with the closed universe, you see here. And W, because I'm also varying W in this range, is below minus one. So a phantom closed universe is in agreement with Planck and supernovae data. And uh, at the same, also uh, a phantom closed universe is also in agreement with Planck and the uh, constraints from the Abel constant, uh, the Abel constant from Ries. But you see, these uh, contours are completely different from these contours. So there is, a, <laughs> there is no concordance at all. And uh, okay, so let's uh, include the BO. If I include BO, then I have a much uh, um, worse chi square. Okay, in, in the Planck and BO are not com really compatible, but let's do this anyway. And I have this region. This, uh, this, uh, this region here. Now uh, the universe is flat and W is uh, uh, compatible with minus one, but you see there is a tension now between Planck and BO and Planck and supernovae data. That in my opinion, okay, is something uh, that uh, is uh, something one should uh, really consider. Okay, so this is my, uh, my opinion. Uh, can, can we say really that uh, the, the, there is no, this is the end of everything, so that everything is discordant. We 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 starting we may, we might okay the point is that uh, it's possible that actually we have a systematic uh, in the Planck data that is driving uh, driving all these anomalies uh, and this is possible and actually it seems confirmed by two recent uh, CMB experiments one is APT ground based experiment and the other is SPT South Pole 3G and they uh, they produce results uh, very recently and they're in agreement with a flat universe, okay? So things for the lambda CN model are in, a, in a better shape when you use these other data sets. And this is great, okay? But the error bars are large. And when I include this data set uh, with Planck, a closed universe is again preferred, even if uh, less smaller statistical significance. And that's also we have this bicep two syndrome. You remember a few years ago, bicep two claiming the detection of gravitational waves uh, of the CMB <laughs> tensor mode at about uh, six standard deviation, more than six standard deviation. But unfortunately, it was just dust, okay, in the contamination from uh, um, from dust in the galaxy that actually could not uh, uh, permit that um, experiment to to be to, to have detected the, the gravitational wave. So my point is the following, these are ground-based experiments. They are great experiments, okay, but we should wait a little bit more time, okay, before claiming that the universe is flat and that Planck is wrong, okay, because Planck, the, the data set from Planck, from the point of view is systematics, is, should be much more robust than, than SPT and, and Planck, okay.
Then uh, there is another point, other authors uh, are saying the following, yes, it's true, you have this discordance, but if you combine uh, plant data with uh, uh, other data sets, like for example, CMB lensing uh, from the, the four point correlation, for, from the three point correlation function, um, yes, uh, for, for the tri spectrum, um, or uh, from co with cosmic chronometers data, then what happens is that these constraints from Planck. Uh, um, they do not exclude anymore a closed universe, a flat universe, sorry, at the level of three standard deviation. They shift, okay, a little bit. And so now the, the tension is just a two standard deviation. I agree, okay, you can combine Planck with other data sets. The only point is that, again, if you, learn, if you want to, to measure curvature, the, the most uh, precise way is just to use the CMB angular spectra. And uh, so imagine, for example, <laughs> that, <laughs> to be in the, 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 the opposite situation where you have uh, uh, Planck uh, angular power spectra in agreement with a flat universe. And these two external data sets suggesting a closed universe, you will uh, easily say, okay, there is a systematic in the CMB lensing of cosmic chronometers because these, uh, these data sets are much less sensitive to, to karma, sure, okay? Um, so at the moment, okay, my, my feeling is the following. <laughs> there is no reason, okay, to think that uh, uh, these uh, data sets are better because they prefer a flat universe, okay? That's my point, which is a completely personal point. And before concluding, uh, let me say that this morning uh, I saw this uh, paper by, uh, by Alkanitz and Mik I know Mikkel, and it seems that, okay, I had really no time to, <laughs> that's the reason why I saw this paper, but I had really no time to read it. But I think they are more or less uh, saying what I told you in this, uh, in this talk, okay? They agree with me, I hope, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, discussed later. later. Uh, I think a very nice paper. Okay, but unfortunately, I could not uh, uh, read it. I did no time to read it, uh, and uh, because I appeared just this morning. But I point to this paper where uh, uh, the, the consistency between cosmological data is uh, is investigated in uh, I think in a very careful way. So these are my conclusion. We have a tension and anomalies in lambda CDM, and this tension at the level of three, five standard deviation. And if you consider curvature, all these anomalies and tension, they increase also in statistical significance, and also curvature is preferred. And so the reason is why we should not consider curvature, okay? So the tension are much uh, higher than what uh, we could think because we are actually uh, suppressing tension when we assume a flat universe. So can all these anomalies uh, due to multiple systematics, this is possible, but the real problem is that the Lambda CDM model, in my opinion, uh, is not, uh, it's not based on uh, known physics, it's not experimentally uh, measured. The, the nothing has been experimentally measured from Lambda CDM, okay? So it, it's very dangerous to think that the Lambda CDM is at the same uh, level of the standard model of particle physics, okay? <laughs> because it's just based on many, many, many assumptions, and this assumption can be uh, clearly uh, wrong. So let me conclude just with this mail I received a bit of time ago. In this mail, they were pointing me that the Hansel data were anticipating the Planck results because in the, in the, the Hansel data you have a prediction about the age of the universe of 13.81 billion of years, which is perfectly consistent with the measurement of Planck, okay? So when I got this email, uh, I, I, I knew immediately what to do. And what he did was to send a mail saying, many thanks for your email. Could you please also give me, <laughs> tell me if the Vedas also report the value of the curvature of the universe, because <laughs> in that case, we might, we might solve uh, our problems. Okay, thanks a lot and uh, I finish here. Thank you very much for the attention. Thanks a lot, Alessandro, for, the, for your very nice talk and uh, for sharing with us your critical view of the standard cosmology, which is very important, right? And, uh, well, uh, for us and for next generation of cosmologists, right, we still have a lot of things to do. So just Let's hope it.
<laughs> yeah. So now I'm gonna open for uh, questions. I have we have some questions already here. People, uh, uh, I think I'm gonna open uh, for some people to ask questions. Simone, can you help me here? Uh, I think uh, Odilio is already here, and uh, yes, he... I promoted him. He okay. Can, uh, okay. Open his uh, microphone and ask his question. Okay, Odilio. So go ahead, please. Uh, uh, thank you, Alessandro, for the excellent talk. Uh, I, I would like to ask you one question. Uh, are the recent measurements of the Hubble constant corrected by the recent acceleration of the universe? I'm asking this because the value of the Hubble constant can depend on how far or old the observables uh, we are using uh, uh, are, I mean, this may explain why the value of the Hubble constant measurement with supernova 1A, uh, which are recent events compared to CMB, has a higher value than the value of the Hubble constant measured with CMB data. Uh, the recent okay. acceleration of the universe would be responsible for the greater value. This would also be re the reason why the result for the value of the Hubble constant from the observation of the GW170817, uh, the gravitational wave, uh, at 440 megaparsec, uh, is between the two previous values. Mm -hmm. But, uh, okay, from GW, I think you have a larger pulse. So I cannot really describe oh, it. Yes. No, uh, yeah. You're, you're in, yeah, it's an important question. Um, this is uh, the, the question uh, they do, they, people ask uh, often to, to raise and the others that are claiming this, actually, you know, this, this constraint on the, on the Hubble constant, if there is some evolution in the, in the supernovae. And um, yeah, I, 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 what I can say is that clearly they, 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 they could be systematics and they could actually affect H0. People working on this uh, value of H0, they are saying that uh, they, there is no evidence for these effects. Um, but if the acceleration is recent. If the universe is accelerating, that this might have an effect on, um, on the age of these objects. And so the evolution could be different. Okay. Yeah, this is, um, it could be, but uh, at the moment it's not clear what is the, the amplitude of the effect. Okay. Thank you, Alessandro. Uh, I think uh, Nicole Benetti wants to, to ask you a question. Ah, yes. Ciao. <laughs> Hi, Alessandro. Thank for the, this very nice talk, uh, very interesting and clear. I would like to ask you if, if there are any clues on what alternative model to the Lambda CDM can be a reasonable physical model to describe the data. I mean, if there are any hint on how to extend the standard model to solve the observed tension. Uh, at the moment, uh, I mean, uh, uh, what we found uh, is uh, that a phantom closed model is uh, in agreement with CMB and supernovae data, is less in agreement uh, with BO, okay, but BO are derived as under the assumption, okay, of no interaction between uh, dark matter and dark energy, and if you have an interaction between dark matter and dark energy, you might have an effective value of W less than minus one. Okay, uh, so it's difficult to say. It seems that a possible direction is to change both curvature and dark energy, but uh, it's, not, it's not easy to do, okay? <laughs> but do you think if uh, we need to extend the Lambda CDM model or is better to look for alternatives? Um, I mean, modify gravity models or something like that? I think at the moment uh, is uh, is difficult. The situation lambda CDM has some several anomalies. At the same time, uh, is uh, uh, there is no clear alternative. Okay, there is no model that actually can um, 
can improve the fit, okay? In, there is no new concordance, cosmic concordance model, in my opinion, okay? So one should still investigate if there is this possibility. So at the moment, still, I don't see a, a new concordance model. I see many new models. Some of them actually, they provide a better fit than Lambda CDM, um, but uh, we have still to work on it, I think. Oh, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, Susana. Uh, yes, first of all, uh, thanks a lot for the very nice talk. Um, I think that my question maybe was um, already answered by the answer of your last question, but let me go again on the point of curvature, because adding curvature as a fit parameter doesn't solve that. I just wanted to point this and, and ask for your opinion. Uh, adding curvature as a free parameter doesn't solve your problem. You get a, a, a new tension between the CMB and the VAO data. I would like to yeah. know what, what you think about that. Yeah, yeah no, no, I agree. Indeed, uh, <laughs> the, pro, it is the, the point is the following. I agree, okay, it doesn't solve. But at the same time, is why you should not include curvature, okay? Curvature is... Uh, uh, something that is uh, predicted by general relativity, okay, there is no reason to do not believe that actually there is. So uh, my point is the following, okay, you, we should use uh, the data to constrain curvature and not uh, the <laughs> assuming flatness, okay, <laughs> to constrain the data. <laughs> this is uh, my, my, my point of view, okay, it's not uh, the, the same the, <laughs> the point of view of everybody, but... Uh, <laughs> So I, the question, I agree, okay, it doesn't solve anything, actually. The things are much worse, okay? But uh, uh, <laughs> then what you do? You, 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 you discard it and say, no, I should have a flat universe. I don't think that this is the, 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 the right way to, to proceed, okay? We should solve also this problem with curvature and, and see. I agree, I have nothing against curvature. Just I wanted to point no, no, out no, no, that you cannot solve the, your problem. Yeah. Thanks, I like it. <laughs> but the fact that I don't like it does, doesn't mean that, uh, <laughs> that it are wrong, okay? Okay, but thank you. Okay, thanks, Susana. Thanks a lot. Uh, I think Javier wants to, to ask you a question. Javier? Uh, hello, Professor Alessandro. So, Hi. Uh, I got very happy with, with your your talk. Uh, uh, it was very very interesting for me for me, and I would like to ask you about the plig and can spec likelihood, because when yeah. you use can spec likelihood, you you obtain uh, results more compatible with the standard lambda CDM model. So, yeah. uh, is there a a way, a way or an estimator? to quantify the, what is the better uh, likelihood, CMB likelihood? No, no, okay. The, uh, first of all, the, the story is the following. In the Planck collaboration, there were two likelihoods. One was a click and the other was CAMSP. After the release of the, so we had two alternative likelihoods. After the release of the Planck data, uh, George Statue and Steve Gratton, they wrote a new version of CAMSPEC. Okay, so this new version, of course, is not anymore the, a, a likelihood from the Planck collaboration. Okay, is a new likelihood from uh, Graton and Eustadio. Okay, so uh, this is the first point. Uh, I don't want to say that it is not uh, <laughs> is, that is less reliable. Okay, but from one side you have a, a likelihood from the Planck collaboration, and from the other side you have the likelihood from Eustadio. But maybe it's the correct one. And at the moment, uh, um, I, I, I think I, the, the two likelihood teams, they discussed a lot, and I've been part of the discussion, and honestly, I think they are both correct, okay? both likelihoods, they, they work well. And indeed, uh, if, you, if you look at the results, the difference is true. What you're saying is there is more compatibility with a flat universe if you use CAMSPEC, but the shift in the standard deviation is just half sigma, okay? There's not more. Indeed, uh, if, you, if, you come, if you look at the, at the, at the posterior, okay, the grade, you still have uh, an indication for a close universe of more than 98.5%, okay, using CAMSPEC. 
And uh, that's more or less uh, the situation. So uh, my point is that in, indeed at, th at this point, since there is no reason to believe which is the correct one, saying that Kanspec is the correct one because it's more compatible with a flat <laughs> universe, again, something that I think is a little bit dangerous, okay? Until there is, it's not clear why one is more compatible with flatness respect to the other one, uh, I would be a little bit more careful. And um, I think the CAMSPEC like is very good. I just want to point, point, to point out that the, the CAMSPEC paper has not yet been published and accepted after one year, okay? So <laughs> there is some discussion, okay, also on this camp. Okay. And if, if I can uh, do a comment about our recent paper, um, uh, Alessandro, Javier is the first author of the paper you showed in the in your last slide, right? The, the paper of today on in Ahmad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, very nice work. Just I was a little bit <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did surprised that actually. <laughs> Uh, professor, one comment about carefully, so I didn't want to show your results. And <laughs> say something wrong, actually. Okay, just okay. I I, I just uh, want to comment uh, one result uh, of our work. Uh, uh, we agree with you because when when we use uh, when you assume a lambda CDM model with curvature, the tensions are very high between BAO and CMB data. And we can perform a, a statistical joint analysis with this data. But one of our results are that when, when we uh, extend the Lambda CDN model with curvature uh, to uh, a WCDN model with curvature, the, tension, the tensions are lo uh, low. And you can perform this, this statistical analysis, this joint statistical analysis with CMB data and BAO, supernovae, and so on, and uh, cosmic chronometers. And in this case, when you perform the, this analysis, uh, you, the result is that the universe, the, the uh, cosmological model is reduced to a lambda CDM to a flat lambda CDM. So the, the curvature uh, is also again compatible with, with, uh, with zero. So uh, just a comment about our work. Okay, but uh, with BO or what? With also Bernoulli or BO? We, we perform a, a, a joint statistical analysis with BAO, uh, supernovae, and CMB. Okay. And in and in this case, the the, the result the result is is omega k uh, very close to to zero. Okay. Uh, okay. But also that without BAO, you have a still uh, this or not? Without BAO, uh, just for CMB, I I don't remember very well what is the 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 result for omega k, but. Uh, it is not uh, in, in high tension with omega k equal, equal to zero. It's less than than the 99% that you find for a long CDM model with curvature. I, I will read it. Uh... Okay, <laughs> professor. So anyway, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to appear like uh, the, the guy who thinks that uh, the universe is closed. And <laughs> okay. We, we, everyone should, uh, should believe that the universe is closed. No? There, there is a joke that actually, you know, there is the Euclid, uh, the Euclid experiment. And after we, we came out with our paper, they said they have uh, to call it Parmenides instead of Euclid because Parmenides, you know, it, it was... <laughs> <laughs> he was thinking about a spherical universe. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, okay. I, I, sorry okay. for that. Thank you so, so much, Professor Biko, uh, for your no, uh, you. excellent you. talk. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I think Rodrigo von Martens. Hey. hey. Uh, first of all, Professor Alessandro, thank you very much for the seminar. Uh, actually, it's really nice to have you here because your papers always appear on our journal club and we always discuss uh, your results. So, so it's, it's very nice to have you here. 
Uh, and actually, I, I, I don't know how many questions I can ask, but I, I have some of them. Um, my first question, uh, I am also an author of the today's paper. Uh, and one thing we, we have on the paper is that the results uh, using CMD, they, um, they changed significantly when you add the, the CMD lensing, uh, the, the, the CMD lensing in the, in the analysis. Uh, so uh, I, I would like to, to see uh, what you think. Uh, I mean, uh, when you, we add the CMD lensing, the results seems to go to the standard cosmology and we don't add lensing it seems a bit far from, from standard cosmology. Um, in your opinion, would it be possible that not using lensing in the CMB uh, a problem? That would be a problem. Or, I mean, maybe some systematic, and, uh, and, uh, we, and it would be necessary to use lensing or not? I just would like to see your opinion. Uh, okay, uh, again, I don't want to, of course, okay, if you have the CMB data from Planck, the angular power spectrum, if you had the lensing, okay, then you have a better agreement uh, with, uh, with a flat universe, okay, so I agree with this, okay. What I'm uh, doing here is uh, just playing really uh, the devil's advocate, okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> really saying, okay, that the CMB angular power spectra, that should be the data set that it's giving you care. Okay. Then, you, of course, you can add external data set. And maybe some of these data sets, they then shift again towards a flat universe, okay? And they agree, okay, this is a, maybe is an indication that the universe is really flat, I agree. But I would prefer to have the angular power spectra data <laughs> to tell me that the universe is flat, okay? So maybe I, I, uh, I'm asking too much, okay? <laughs> but <laughs> the data set that is telling you the curvature should tell, to, to gives you the, the, the zero curvature, okay? Not uh, the, 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 the sum of other data sets that in some way they, they bring back the curvature to zero, okay? It's, it's a bit disappointing in my opinion. I agree for other people, I mean, uh, it's perfectly fine. Then you say, okay, this is a, a flat universe and then you stop. Um, and agree with you, okay? And I think we also wrote this in our paper, but okay, it's a bit depressing. <laughs> I would say that the, 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 the data set, the whole data set that actually should measure the coverage of the universe is telling you something different. And in, that's my point, okay? But I agree what, yeah. with your analysis. Okay, uh, do, uh, can I ask uh, one more question? Okay. Um, I would like to, to, to ask you, uh, uh, how do you see the importance of BAO for constraining curvature? I mean, uh, as uh, in one slide of your presentation, you showed the results from Planck, when you don't use lensing, when you use lensing, and when you add BAO, and when we add BAO, it's uh, more or less a very small circle around the curvature zero. Um, so, uh, I mean, uh, how, uh, just, it's, it's, there's no correct answer, it's just to see your opinion. Because we know that uh, for, for having DAO, we need to input uh, a fiducia model at the beginning, but uh, people claim that uh, this is, this don't bring model dependence to the DAO measurement. Uh, but how do you see that uh, these this strong constraints in curvature from DAO? Listen, okay, no, I understand. Uh, again, uh, I see that if you combine Planck plus BO, there is a tension, but you, you say, you, I don't care about this tension, and then I go, okay, to the flat universe. But uh, let me, uh, for example, tell you the following. Uh, uh, from, there is a tension also on the Hubble constant. Let's suppose to use uh, the uh, Hubble constant uh, with Planck data, and if you combine the Planck and the Hubble constant, you have a, a very strong, uh, the, the Hubble constant from me is a very strong limit on the neutrino mass, okay? And you will say, no, I don't believe uh, on this constraint on neutrino mass because I'm combining uh, Planck data with uh, the Hubble constant data and they are not compatible, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that the same, same point I'm making is about curvature. 
I agree that if you combine Planck and BO, you have a, a zero curvature. But you should not be so uh, sure about this constraint because you are combining things that are not in agreement, okay, are in tension. That's my, my point. Now, why they are in tension, okay, <laughs> I don't know why yet, okay, because uh, <laughs> the, the, the point is that they are in tension. Maybe there is a systematic in Planck. Maybe BO are model dependent. And so the way they extract BO, because they're measuring galaxies at the end, okay? <laughs> we are coming, calling them acoustic oscillation, but actually these are galaxies, okay? And our galaxies trace mass, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and there are a plenty of, okay, of reconstruction methods. And actually at the moment, there is no paper that actually uh, look at, the, for example, the interaction between dark matter, BO, the effect of interaction of dark matter and dark energy with BO, okay? Uh, you, you can ask people working on BO, ask them, and the results, they say, you cannot apply BO results on, uh, for example, interacting dark energy model because uh, uh, this, has, this model has not been tested in BO, okay? So there are limits, okay, because when they do the analysis, they do a credible good analysis, but they do assumptions and they might be also systematic. So at the moment, I say there is this tension and, uh, and that's all. <laughs> we have to, to, to consider uh, all the possibilities. Okay. And so if I can, uh, one very last question. Uh, as, as I said, uh, you still have two people to, to ask, or okay. when? It's okay. uh, Rome and now it's almost 11, but go ahead, very quick question. Okay, uh, very last question, uh, Asha. Um, as I said, we, we follow your papers and uh, we know that you also work with models and trying to solve these tensions and dark, and dark energy models, including models with interaction with that sector, which is something I am really interested in. And um, there's a recent paper from George Statue where he's states that uh, uh, dark energy would not uh, be the answer for the H0 tension. And uh, it, it's a strong uh, statement and he has this, his argument. And I would like to, to see your opinion on that if dark energy could be the, the solution or not uh, for the H0 tension. I, I don't know, I, I tried to talk with him, but <laughs> the problem is the following, okay? Because uh, I don't know, what he's saying is the following. You take the Planck data, okay? If you have the, from one side, the, the Ries et al, like ditch not measurement. Then you have the Planck data. And in the middle, you have the supernovae data, the high redshift supernovae data. Now, it depends. If you calibrate the supernovae using the, the Planck, okay, of course, you have the supernovae plus Planck are in disagreement with H0 from Ries, okay? But if you, can, if you do the opposite, and you calibrate the supernovae with the H0 of Ries, okay, using the same calibration, then you have two data sets that in, in tension with Planck, okay? So in, in my opinion, it, it is just looking at one side of the, of the story, okay? So in some way, he's con totally convinced that Planck is correct, and maybe he is correct, okay? But uh, sometimes he, he forgets, maybe for systematics as in any experimental data, okay? Maybe also present in Planck, and I'm part of the Planck collaboration. Now, uh, what he's claiming is a bit strange to me because he is also claiming that you cannot use the H0 prior to this interacting dark energy model. But the point is that we check in this, uh, the, the change in the H0 prior is very small in the interacting dark energy models because it, I mean, this is the upper flow, okay? You're measuring H0 from the upper flow. And there the dependence on the, on the Q0 and other parameters is extremely small. So, so it is not really correct what he's saying, okay? That we cannot use the H0 prior in, in case of interacting dark energy model and things like this. So I'm, I'm, I'm not really convinced of, of that paper you're mentioning. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry for bothering you with such a... Absolutely. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand. I think it might be... <laughs> okay, we have time for two more questions. And uh, Davi Camarena, he wants to ask you one question, Alessandro. Davi, okay. go ahead. Yeah. You can, uh, thank you. 
Yeah, hi. so you can you, you can comment on on this. Uh, yeah. Just say say yeah, about sure. the. It was, it was about the comment, yeah. Thank you so much for the for the nice talk. It was very didactic and interesting, in fact. So yes, uh, first I want to comment what what you say and what the uh, Rodrigo say is that uh, I think the the right way to understand the, this this conclusion is that if you don't change the sun horizon scales of Planck, you cannot solve the tension. This is if you have only a early uh, late time transition or late time modification of the lambda CDM model, it's not possible to solve the Hubble tension because the problem is not in fact in the Hubble tension. It's, it's not in fact the Hubble constant. It's in the calibration that you get from the faders, from the phase and calibration that you get from BAO and CMB. So if you just modify uh, how the Hubble parameter evolves at low rest shift, you are not modifying the calibration of supernovae. So this is, this is I think, the right, the right way to, to, to try to see this, this, this problem. And the fact also this point that when you in use the Hubble parameter as a prior, you are forgetting about the absolute magnitude supernovae. So if you want to include this information that there is in fact attention in MB also, you should use the absolute magnitude supernovae as a prior. Of course, uh, you are you also have to make sure that you are not combining things that are in tension. So it's more or less the same the same conclusion for for H not. I don't know if you you agree with that or not. Um, yeah, partially in the sense that I think that yeah, I agree with you that uh, the the absolute calibration is important. Okay, um, but uh, uh, okay, the point is that uh, if you calibrate with H not, okay, if you calibrate with a low redshift supernovae. The, the high redshift supernovae, then the high redshift supernovae will be in conflict with Planck. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, it, it's not like uh, saying that uh, because George seems that he's showing that the Planck plus supernovae is against H naught. It's not really correct. Okay. They are in the middle. So it depends uh, <laughs> which of the two of the data sets you prefer. Okay. To yeah, I think that's why I, I think you should, you, should, you should think that, sorry for interrupting. As you did in your paper, okay, there are several ways to calibrate, okay, the, the absolute calibration of the supernovae. You can use a plant to calibrate supernovae and then supernovae in agreement, disagreement with the H naught from Rees, but you can also use the same calibration used by Rees for the high ratio supernovae. And, and then the aggression of supernovae will be you know, in, uh, in disagreement with Planck. And so in some point, it, it makes more, in my opinion, it's much more uh, physically motivated to assume the same, uh, I mean, because it seems that from when you use H0, you have a, 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 a calibration when you use uh, the supernovae for H0, and then suddenly you change <laughs> to the calibration from Planck, okay? And so <laughs> it, it seems like the universe up to a certain scale <laughs> prefers <laughs> calibration, then change calibration to, to, <laughs> to what you have in Planck. It, 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 it's not so, so, so easy for me, okay, to understand this. I, I, yeah. well, that's what I think it's important to take in, in account that in that conclusion, you are assuming that the, the sum horizon scale is the correct one. Yeah, so sure. That is, the, so, that is the, 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 the important point in that conclusion. But my question was about if we, if we, what happens if, for example, we consider that we live in a model that in a universe that is not homogeneous and isotropic. isotropic. So yeah, can we increase the, the amount of lens? Can we, for example, solve this uh, internal discrepancy in the, in the Hubble, in the Planck? Data set. Mm -hmm. uh, this one uh, I'm not sure about because you are in the it's still in the linear regime. Okay, so so I'm sorry, but I don't uh, I don't know about maybe there are papers that consider this. So you are saying that if the universe is an isotropic, then if this can uh, change the value of a lens, just I don't know. Uh, right. Yeah, not these are uh, a lens uh, justified by uh, 
an anisotropic model. It's difficult to say because uh, a lens is uh, coming from uh, fluctuation of the linear regime. So I'm, I would be surprised. I think the only way to have a lens not coming from uh, from modified gravity is to have um, primordial fluctuation that uh, then can mimic the same effect of an A lens in the primordial spectrum. Okay, so the, the, there are also models of uh, inflationary models that can try to change this A lens value. Okay, so even even if we live in a local boy. It would be not possible to change. Okay, if you in a local void, then also I agree with you that actually the, the H not prior should be considered now because in a different way, because locally, okay, there <laughs> you have an effect for sure in the H not, okay. And um, but at the moment, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't I don't know about okay. this. Thank you so much, and sorry for taking so much so much time. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so you go to the very last question because it's very late in Rome now. <laughs> Where that? <laughs> Hi, Professor Melcari. Thanks I, again. For I will have a time to about <laughs> all these questions. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the nice for the nice talk, Professor. Very nice talk. Thank you for that. Uh, luckily, my question is being already, uh, I mean, partially answered uh, when you answered David Kummer. I was about to ask you uh, one, like, one question. Uh, if a, you, you first said that the AL can only be, you first introduced this AL like by hand and then you were tricking, t uh, tuning his value to see how the pulse spectra changed. But then you gave it uh, a physical interpretation only if the universe is closed. I would like to check if, it, if it's right. Is that what you, you mean? I mean, you can only understand AL like physically if you consider the universe is closed. So okay, no, no. Okay, let, let me, okay, I think that's correctly. Um, uh, the point is the following: AL was introduced as a test parameter. Mm -hmm. Okay, just do the test. You, ch you change AL. If AL is different from one, there is a problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is independent from lambda CDM because you have a more lensing than what you expect. Okay, there is a problem. And, and that's all. Then you have to, <laughs> to see what is the problem. And a possibility is a closed universe. And the closed universe uh, now, because uh, we are in the 2021, talking about a closed universe uh, is like uh, talking about uh, science fiction or something really strange, OK? But uh, let's say 15, 20 years ago, <laughs> the garbage was not yet measured, OK? Was, uh, there was a possibility, OK? It was something that has to be fixed from the observation. So, <laughs> And uh, one of the, the, the been part of the, of the first papers that were claiming a flat universe, okay, coming from symbian isotropies. Maybe this is still correct, uh, but I think okay, we should always have an open mind and, and see. Look, omega is a parameter that has to be fixed by observation, and uh, if they tell us something different, we have to understand why. Now the question is, do we have other possibilities? And there are exotic models, in my opinion, a little bit more exotic. Okay, first of all, the possibility of uh, these exotic inflationary models. There are models that can also reproduce the AL, but they're a little bit of a doc model, okay? You, you, you have a AI, and so you, you try to change the primordial spectrum to have that value, okay? And the other possibility is with modified gravity. And um, in that case, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I have still to find a good model of, let's say, of modified gravity, where you have uh, the, the Lagrangian <laughs> of this uh, modification to the general, uh, the correct way, okay, to modify general relativity. And then you do all the correct computation and then show that there you have AL larger than one. Because very often they say, okay, just, uh, so if you say the, the, the workable modified gravity models for AL larger than one, they just uh, change, for example, the, they introduce the slip parameter, no? the, between phi, phi, the Newtonian potential and, um, and the phi no? potential. They just make them different. 
by hand again, okay? <laughs> so you, are, you modify something by hand and then say, no, this is a modified gravity. So you modify the, 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 the perturbation equation by hand, okay? <laughs> okay. So there is not much uh, physical, uh, let's say, improvement in doing this, in the sense that there is no real uh, alternative to modify mm -hmm. gravity that can produce IL larger than 20%. I think, uh, for example, in the... Um, F of R models uh, like the Starobinsky model or the user wiki model, we found that there is actually something, a larger value of AL, but not 20%, like 4%, if I remember correctly, okay. That's all more or less. Okay, okay. So I, I, hope, I hope I answer to your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Wendell, thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Uh, thank you uh, and uh, for your patience. <laughs> uh, Alessandro, uh, okay, uh, well, thank you again for this very nice talk. I know that uh, it's late in Rome now. We had a lot of questions because the talk was really nice, very, very, well, uh, critical arguments about the, this. <laughs> I may have been a bit too much provocative, okay, but I think... Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that was great. I, I, I'm sure that everybody enjoyed a lot. Thank you very much again, and uh, we keep in touch, okay? We... Okay. Okay, be safe. Bye. Bye to everybody. Bye.